Here's a house hack on how you can purchase your first primary residence and become a landlord with an FHA loan. FHA loans allow you to purchase up to a four unit property with as little as three and a half percent down. Now, if you're a first time home buyer or you just graduated college or you're newly married and 20% down is not an option, FHA might be the program for you. The reason why an FHA loan is a viable option for consumers is because they allow you to put down a low down payment, they allow you to go up to a higher debt to income ratio, and they also allow you to again purchase up to four units, which means you can live in one and use the other three units to pay that mortgage payment and the expenses on the property. This gives you the experience that you need to become a landlord without having to worry about other properties because you'll be living at the property. So I think it's a great first step and an opportunity to really get that experience under your belt if you decide to continue the real estate journey and buy more investment properties. Now here's how you qualify for an FHA loan. One of the most important pieces of getting approved for an FHA loan is making sure you have a two year work history. Now, as I said in one of my last videos, there are ways to get around having that two year work history. If you went to college for a specific job field, you know, for example, if you went to college to become a nurse and you graduate and now you're only working two, three, four, five, six months and you don't have that two year work history, you can use the college experience to get approved for a mortgage. So you can come right out of college, put three and a half percent down on a four unit property and let the other tenants pay for the mortgage and build up wealth. Another very important piece of information that you need to know for an FHA loan is that the FHA allows you to have a lower credit score. Now, as you get older, you typically become more responsible. So if you had issues with credit in the past, the FHA understands that. Unless it's federal debt, the FHA will not lend you money if you didn't pay your student loans or any other federal debt. But the FHA does understand that people do go through tough times and they want to give you a chance to purchase a home and help you get approved. Now, unlike other programs with an FHA loan, they allow your credit score to be in the low to mid 500s and still have a chance to get approved for a mortgage. So reach out to your licensed mortgage professional so they can run your application through the system to see if they can get you that approval. Once you're pre-approved for your FHA loan, now it's time to contact your real estate agent so you could start looking for a home. Now keep in mind, like I said in the beginning of this video, you wanna make sure you find a property where the rent is going to help cover those monthly expenses. Now, the good part about 2024 is rents are as high as ever. So really no matter where you find a property, you can expect to receive a high monthly payment in rent from that tenant. Now once you and your realtor pick out the perfect property, make sure you speak with them so you can have them start doing some homework on what tenants are gonna rent the property, how much they're gonna pay in monthly rent, and make sure before you sign a fully executed sales agreement, make sure you have all of the information that you need to make an educated decision for you and your family. Now the whole goal behind this process is to get you that experience of being a landlord so you can make the right decision in the future if you wanna continue on your real estate investment journey. Now the whole plan behind this is to get experience under your belt as a landlord and as a homeowner. So now once a certain amount of time goes by, whether it's a year or so, you now have other options. You can either refinance and pull equity out of the property to put down towards the purchase of a new home or continue living in that property and renting out the other units as the mortgage continues to pay itself. Another option you have is refinancing the property and seeing if there's a benefit to lowering the interest rate and payment and also coming out of the FHA loan, which would eliminate the monthly mortgage insurance. You may not be ready to continue purchasing more investment properties. So if this option is something that you qualify for and it allows you to lower your monthly payments and continue using the rent from those tenants to pay the monthly expenses, this could be a great option for you. And then when you're ready, you can continue on purchasing your next property. Now I get asked this question all the time. Why should I take a mortgage if I have the means to purchase a property in cash? Now, you should probably speak with your financial advisor or your accountant about the tax benefits or the financial reasons behind why borrowing money is a good idea when it comes to a mortgage. But in my opinion, if you have the opportunity to borrow money to purchase a property and then those tenants are paying for the monthly expenses 
why would you pay for the property in cash? You can now use that capital that you did not put into that property to purchase more real estate. I'm sure you've heard the term, don't ever put all your eggs in one basket, and it works the same way in real estate. I'd rather own more property than have all my money in one property because over time, as you pay down the balance and the market appreciates, which we've seen historically, you'll open up more opportunities and that's how you build wealth for you and your family. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you ever have any questions, all of my information is in the description. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and comment on the video, and I look forward to sharing some more information with you guys and for what's to come.